So I had a young gal visit my wife and I a few days ago, and she recounted a story of her childhood that really upset me. And, and it came to let me realize how dangerous the teaching of hell and the ways to avoid hell in traditional churches are. When I say traditional churches, I'm talking Pentecostal, um, charismatic, reformation type uh, churches, fundamentalist, um, full gospel, Catholic, Episcopal, mainline denominational churches, um, denominations that have been around for a long time. This gal was, her parents were in a traditional Pentecostal church of which there are tens of thousands in the United States and probably hundreds of thousands around the world. At age five, her Pentecostal parents uh, took her to church. Well, obviously they took her to church before then, but on this particular day, the church tried to get this five-year-old girl to be born again. And the in this denomination of Christianity, to be born again, you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you would speak in tongues. So in this particular type of denomination, and I've been in some, uh, at least two or three of, of these different uh, Pentecostal type denominational churches, they um, come around the, the person and uh, very often it's, it's the ladies who um, start speaking in tongues around the, the person who's going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they uh, cause the, the, the person to raise their hands and to begin to try to just let their tongue loose to bring forth the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, with this little girl, nothing was coming out. And uh, after they worked her over for a little while, they finally, one of the people finally said, if you just at night, every night, uh, pray to Jesus and just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. I love you, I love you. And just say that every night. This five-year-old girl, in her innocence, prayed that prayer to the age of eight. Every night she go to bed I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I don't. She, I didn't ask her how many minutes every night she did this, but she did this to the age of eight, three years, and anticipating, expecting that through that repetition, eventually she would speak in tongues and get saved. But prior to her speaking in tongues, she was not saved, and she was destined to be burned alive forever and ever. Imagine that kind of pressure on a five-year-old through eight-year-old. Well, eventually this poor little girl got to the place of saying this so many times that she ultimately became disgusted with the name Jesus, revolted against the name, and, and came to the place of absolutely hating God. Just disgustingly hating God in, in, in vehement ways. And from the age of eight to nine, she was just um, ticked off at God, mad at Him, rebelling rebelling against him, um, just despising the very name. Then at age nine, something happened where she woke up one day and that hatred and that uh, you know, disgust of God just went away and she fell in love with God. She had some kind of an epiphany, some kind of, a, I don't know how to describe it, but her vehement anger against God just dissipated. And from that day forward, she started loving God. That poor girl 
was tormented those three years. The teaching of hell, the teaching of if you don't get it right, if you don't somehow say the right words, or go to the right denomination, or read your Bible enough, or know the Ten Commandments, or whatever, some kind of a system, a road, a ritual, or whatever, if you're teaching your kids that, and hinging upon them their fate with those words, you are in danger of terrorizing your kids. Let me give you a simple example of how this stuff works, how easily it is we can, where we manipulate our kids to the place where ultimately maybe we just be, are, become absolutely disgusted with God, instead of drawing close to God. I was at a uh, yard sale not too long ago, and uh, there was a lady that was running it, and she had five kids. I'm guessing she was Catholic. I don't really know, but you know, just it, I just kind of got that sense. And somewhere when I was checking out, um, we got to discussing some things that were spiritual in nature. I don't remember exactly what it was. But whatever it was, the little girl, maybe she was eight, nine, something like that, she said, well, we are, we are all going to heaven. And immediately her mother quipped, if you're good. Dear lady, whoever you are, and dear person who's listening to this video as that I'm speaking as I'm driving home from store, um, you put that little injunction in a small child that you're, you go to heaven because you're good and you go someplace else and in Western theology, in Western tradition, and in church tradition, if you go into the, in my, in my town, the nine churches in, in our town, if, if you uh, are talking about going somewhere, if you're talking about not going to heaven, just about everybody in that church will, in their mind, mean that you're going to another place called hell. You got two choices. If you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell, estranged from God, eternally tortured, eternally tormented, no hope of reprieve lost forever without hope so when you tell your children that they're going to heaven if they're good you have put a death sentence on those kids you have implanted a seed in their hearts and in their minds that will terrorize them and torment them and many of them ultimately will despise the very God you want them to believe in. If this has got you thinking, please, 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 especially if you're a parent or you plan to raise kids, visit tentmaker.org and look into this subject a little bit deeper. It's critical. It's really important. On tentmaker.org, you'd be surprised how many people I uh, that visit Tentmaker who have been spiritually terrorized by well-meaning parents. Power of the tongue. Messed up our kids and not even aware that we mess them up. So please visit tentmaker.org for the sake of your kids that our Heavenly Father loves with a love that you cannot even fathom, cannot even conceive in your natural mind and natural affections. I better pay attention to the road.